expectations of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. This day marks the beginning of our trek through the, this year of the Narrative Lectionary. And the way that the Narrative Lectionary works is we start each year in the beginning at Genesis. We get, get stories out of the beginning, and we walk through the Old Testament into the New Testament into the prophets, into the, the coming of the Messiah, and then at, at Christmas time we get Jesus, and we get his story through Easter, and then after Easter we get the story of the disciples and how the church continues. So today we start our trek through this year's narrative lectionary with the creation story out of Genesis chapter 2, which leads me to a question. How many creation stories are there in the Bible? For those of you that couldn't hear Kurt, Kurt said, at least two. Right? Because Genesis chapter 1, we had that just a little bit ago, right? In the beginning, like three weeks ago when we started our Apostles' Creed thing. In the beginning, God created, and the earth was a formless void, and, and God spoke, and the wind blew over the waters, right? And there's the first creation story where God creates everything, and, and they're either in pairs or in triads, and God sees everything, and everything is... Good. Good. Right. And then we get the second creation story this morning, starting in Genesis chapter 2 at verse, actually 4b, which means the second half of verse 4, where it talks about how God created man out of the dust, and, he, and then he breathed air into his nostrils, and when he breathed the air into the man's nostrils, what, what is that? Spirit, right? The word for breath is also spirit. So God put his spirit into man. And there's a little word play here, right? What's the man's name? Actually, we don't know yet. That's true, that's true. But you're right. Next. Don't say it says he is the man. He's referred to as the man. But, but, but the word, well, it is the in the Hebrew. But you're right. The translation doesn't always work that way. We'll get to something later that Sarah Beth read in the reading that shouldn't be there either. So which is something that we all learn all the way through. Um, but the, 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 the man's name is Adam, as Kurt said, and Adam means... Not the. <laughs> it's dirt, basically, or earth. So God created Adam out of the... Adam. He created man out of the dust. He formed him into his image, and he breathed life into him. And then he, he put him, he created a garden, the Garden of Eden, which is someplace in the east. And it has this rivers that flow out of it. And God put man in the garden to do what? To till it and to tend to it. It is our job as humans to take care of creation. God created it and created man and put man into it so that we could take care of it. Right? It's right there. In chapter 2 of Genesis. And then God said that the man should not be alone, that he needed to create a helper, right? Right? Is that what it says? Man needs a. Does it say partner or does it say helper? We'll get to that in a minute. He actually said a helper, right? What does it say? A helper A helper could not be found, right? I will make him a helper as his partner. Uh, so God says he's going to make the man someone to help them. So God creates out of the dust every creature that there is. Now, how would you like to have the job? And then brought them to the man and said, name this. What would you think if you were given that task? God created you and then brought to you this creature that walks on four hooves, chews its cud, creates milk, and goes moo. Now you have to name it. Duck. Or God brings to you a dog. And how many different kinds of dogs? Are how many different kinds of cows are there? How many different kinds of cats are there? How many different kinds of insert. We read about horses and mules in the song, right? There's all kinds of different 
varieties of these animals, but God created every last living creature and every bird that flies out of the dust, gave them life and brought them to the man and said, name them. And the man named them, but out of all of these creatures that God created, there wasn't found a companion, a helper, a partner for the man. Right? That's what it says. So then God caused the man to fall asleep. And he took... What did he take? His rib. That's what it says here. Is that why a man has one less rib than... Right? It's not true. It's not true, right? Those of you that have studied uh, physiology and stuff know that men... Men do not have one less rib than women do. Because that's, a, that's something that we were told. That's not necessarily true. It's not true at all, actually. So God caused the woman to fall asleep, and it says that he took a rib. Actually, what it says in the Hebrew is that he took part of his side. And then he caused that part of the side and the man to be healed up, to, to come back together. So out of the side of the man, God created woman. And that's why Adam says, this is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. It wasn't just a bone. It was part of the side. I could tell that old joke, right? You know what that joke? I'm going to get myself in trouble if I tell this. I don't really mean it. Right? Some of you know what I'm going to say. Right? You're laughing. It's, uh, it's, uh, God comes to man and says, well, I created all these creatures for you, and I didn't find anything to help you, so I'm going to cause you to fall asleep, and I'm going to take um, your right arm, your left leg, Part of your heart, part of your brain, and four ribs. And the man looks at it and says, what can I get for a rib? <laughs> Falls flat every time. <laughs> but God created woman out of the side. And it said earlier that God created this helper, right? We're going to go back to that word. That's why I was asking. Because in here it actually says a helper as a partner. The word there for helper is azur in the in the Hebrew. And the word used the word azur is used mostly in the Old Testament to refer to who? Does anybody know? This is why it's interesting because if you think that when you look at the word helper, and I'm digging myself into a hole here, but I promise I'm gonna climb right out of it. It's all gonna be okay. When you think of the word helper, it's somebody who's subordinate. It's somebody who, who does stuff for the other person, right? Yes, it is, kind of. I mean, that's how we think of it, right? And that's where we get a lot of the language in the Bible that says that women are subordinate to men. But here's the thing that you've got to know about this word and why that's absolutely not true. That word azure, that word helper, means somebody who stands in front of, somebody who assists. Somebody who walks alongside. And in the Old Testament, the word azur is most used referring to God. God cannot. <laughs> you guys didn't hear that back there, did you? You got to say it louder. I can't say that. You got to say that louder. God it doesn't, doesn't have the right punch if I say it. God couldn't be everywhere, so he created one. <laughs> who's subordinate to the man. The woman is somebody who is a partner, a full-time companion, someone who walks alongside and assists in every actual way, in every factual way that there is. Man, woman was created because there wasn't found a good companion for man out of all the other creatures. Now, now dogs are great companions and cats are great companions and all of our pets that we have are great companions, but they don't, they don't become a partner for us. They don't become somebody that can walk alongside us and assist us in everything that happens. And that's why woman was created and why man was created to be in a relationship plan. together. And they were put in the garden and they were put in the garden for what reason? To tend the earth, to take care of what God has created. Every last one of us is called to take care of what God has created, to be the, the tillers of the earth, to be the tenders of his creation to take care of what we've been placed into so that this lives on forever. Because that's why God created us. And he created us to live in relationships. That's why God created you. So that you could be in creation, 
you could be in relationship with every part of creation and to help take care of it and to, to make it last forever. There was one other point that I was getting. Trees. This gets us into next week, or the, the lesson that would follow after this. But how many trees were there in the garden? More than one. A lot. How many special trees were there, Clay? Two. Two. How many special trees did you think there were? It actually says in our reading, right? Man, God created man. He put him in the garden. He created the garden. He put man in the garden. He said, take care of this garden and, and eat of every tree you want to except for the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then when man was expelled from the garden in the next chapter, why was man expelled from the next from the garden? Not because they ate of the apple, not because the woman gave him the apple to eat, because here's the thing with that, as I talked about last year. Man was there when woman ate from the apple, so if the man really didn't want him to eat, her to eat of it, he could have said, don't eat that. He was complicit in the whole thing. It's not woman's fault. It's not woman's fault. Right? They ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then God said, we need to expel them from the garden so they don't do what? Kurt said it, but nobody else heard it except for Helen, probably. <laughs> it's not because they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and then they understood that they were naked and they had to cover themselves. It was because if they would have eaten from the other special tree, the tree of life, then God said they will be exactly like us. And that's why we have to expel them from the garden, so that they can't possibly ever eat. See, God created us to be like him. God created us to be in the image of God so that we could tend what God created for us, so that we could help in the continuation of creation, because creation is not done. It still continues. It's not a six-day process and then it ends. Creation is something that God is continually doing over and over and over and over and over again. God is continually creating everything out of dust and creating new things and helping us and using us to do that for you. That's why you were created. That's why God put you here. That's why God loves you and wants you to go into the world and tell them how much God loves them too. So take care of creation and live in relationships and know that God loves you and wants you to continue doing what he has set you here to do. To go into the world and share his love and take care of everything that God has created.